So you should be thinking of these sell-offs as a gift. These, I call them macro spasms. They don't usually last very long. Rates are going to come down. Liquidity is going to come in. Bitcoin Zella stands out with its simplicity and clarity. We've crafted an experience that anyone can dive into, whether you're a crypto expert or just a new to the crypto world. Now guess who keeps his eye on us? The author of best-selling book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Robert Kiyosaki. And we want to take this opportunity and thank all the people who trusted us and we read every comment and the best part, it's free. Subscribing now means you will get all new information for free. Don't just follow the trends, stay ahead of them. Subscribe to Bitcoin Zella today and enjoy the new edge. Let's join Raul Powell in a conversation about these topics and more. And what you need to ask yourself is the main drivers of crypto are the business cycle, i.e. where are we with the economy? Well, we're starting to pick up slowly. Inflation's coming down. Rates are going to come down. Liquidity's going to come in. And so therefore, that's usually a very good time for crypto. So the the tailwind is behind you. Um, and the other thing, are people adopting the technology? Are things being built on it? And that's ongoing too. So when you see a news event like the last few days, you know, driven by macro factors, you tend to think they're likely to be short term. Now, if the the business cycle was getting old and the economy was starting to feel a bit more fragile, then yes, you might be worried about it. But this is early in the cycle. And generally, you have to expect the volatility. And how I've always dealt with it is a Jedi mind trick, which is you look forward to it. When it happens, you can buy more and you get to compound your returns um, much better than anybody else who just does nothing or tries to trade around it. So you should be thinking of these sell-offs as a gift is, oh, wow, if I can find a bit more cash, I can put it into the market. And you tend to do really well over the cycle by doing that strategy. If the economy is rolling over after you've had a strong period. Inflation has been rising. The Fed are raising rates. If it happens then, it can risk turning into something bigger. When you're the opposite, which is the business cycle is just turning up now, the Fed are cutting rates, the probability of this being a bigger event is significantly lower. So from that probability, less so. The other thing is something happened in 2008 that has stopped a lot of this. In 2008, the central banks discovered the money printer. And the money printer, and you and I have talked about it on this show before, essentially is debasing the currency by printing more currency. Now, it's dressed up in a nice term called liquidity these days. It used to be quantitative easing, but they find different ways of doing it. When they print more currency, it makes the value of that, the purchasing cap power of that currency go down versus scarce assets. So it makes assets go up. So now every time, every four years, in fact, that we've come close to something that could be nastier, they've started printing money. And it's not just the US, it's everybody, all the main central banks. And that has kept a bottom under markets, even in 2022 was a bit trickier because we had inflation. So it was hard to print money. But eventually when it got to it, when the S&P was down about 30%, they kind of went enough's enough. And um, they started printing money again. So I don't think there is a lot to fear. In fact, I would be so outrageous to claim the probability of a down 50% market is now miles smaller than it was when you and I grew up, when it was a common occurrence that we would see it, we won't see this again because of the money printer. Okay. doesn't mean it's a risk-free world, obviously, because when they print money, they're debasing your savings by 8% a year to start with. But if you think of that 8% cost of that debasement, that's like the central banks buying a put option on the whole system and it's costing you 8% premium a year. Put it that way, it's not the worst thing in the world, but it's never great. Now, inflation itself is driven by a lot of lagging factors and housing is the big lagging factor and wages, both of which are coming down. So we should see inflation much lower. Now, if I look at something called inflation break-evens, that's Wall Street's guess of where inflation will be in one year's time. If I look at it now on my Bloomberg screen, it's at 0.63%. So they're pricing in a massive undershoot of inflation. So it's telling us that rates should come down significantly. Right now, they're probably 100, 150 basis points too tight. And I think they should come down to probably around 2%.
which is also very convenient because this year the US Treasury has to roll $10 trillion of debts. And it's very expensive to roll it at 5.5%. It's a lot easier to do at 2%. So, you know, I think it's a blessing and the Fed will want to get rates uh, as far down as possible for the next kind of 12 months when they have to roll all this debt. Michael Saylor tweets about Bitcoin's future as it trades steadily around $60,000, following a strong recovery. Michael Saylor, MicroStrategy's founder, posted a tweet with a futuristic image of an extraterrestrial landscape, captioned, Claim the Future, as Bitcoin holds steady at around $60,000. Bitcoin has been trading in the $60,000 range after briefly hitting $62,000, reflecting strong investor confidence. Bitcoin recovered from a 25% crash caused by Japan's stock market plunge, which triggered a global market downturn. Spot Bitcoin ETFs saw significant inflows, totaling 4,698 BTC, $283.87 million, with BlackRock's IBIT receiving the largest share at 2,641 BTC, $159.57 million. BlackRock now holds 347,608 BTC, valued at $21 billion, surpassing MicroStrategy's 226,500 BTC, $7.538 billion, reflecting the growing institutional interest in Bitcoin. If you think of most asset prices versus this debasement, the S&P is doing about 8% a year since 2012 which basically just keeps your head above water. The Nasdaq's done about 17%, but Bitcoin's been doing 150%. And when you look at Nasdaq versus Bitcoin, the Nasdaq is down 99.7, no, 99.97%. So it does do very good for your purchasing power, but this debasement is a real issue because most things just don't keep up with the debasement. So that's, so you're right, the rolling, we're not going to have a massive debt blow up what we're going to have is this ongoing bleeding of all of our purchasing power. So the volumes in ETFs are driven by two net inflows or people known as arbitragers who are you know, arbitraging the futures market. So we don't know what that flow was. So they would sell the futures which traded at a premium and then buy the ETF. We don't know what that flow was, but let's assume it's net inflows because Binance saw record inflows yesterday as well. So what we're seeing is people, I think, because of the education that you've been doing, I've been doing, Michael Saylor's been doing, everybody's been doing, people are starting to understand the game. And even Larry Fink has been explaining the game. The game is the erosion of your purchasing power, not via traditional CPI inflation, but via this more pernicious debasement idea. And I think people are understanding and have been educated that this is a volatile asset class. And, you know, as I started at the beginning of the show, is if we do get sell-offs, people are starting to realize that's what I buy. You know, that same strategy worked incredibly well in the NASDAQ over the years as well. Um, you know, you've got a big secular trend, any wobbles, generally a buying opportunity. Solana. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Solana is cheap, fast, and there's a lot of innovation coming. Um, and we're seeing lots of nice, easy applications for people to use. A massive sell order of 12,000 BTC has raised concerns of potential market manipulation, with Bitcoin's price tipping below $60,000. A massive 12,000 BTC sell order, valued at nearly $750 million, appeared on the Binance order book, raising concerns about possible market manipulation by large holders or whales. Bitcoin's price, which recently reached a high of $62,775, quickly dropped below $60,000, leaving traders worry of the market's direction. Market analysts, including Don Crypto Trades, noted a significant imbalance on Binance, with far more sell orders than buy orders, potentially suppressing Bitcoin's short-term volatility. The phenomenon of spoofing, where large traders place orders to manipulate market perception, is suspected in this case, adding to traders' concerns. The market remains divided on Bitcoin's future with some predicting further declines while others point to long-term indicators like the 200-day EMA as signals of a possible recovery. Despite the sell-off, Bitcoin's market cap saw a significant one-day increase, intensifying the debate over the market's next move. Trump and Putin are competing for Bitcoin mining dominance, with Trump focusing on U.S. job creation and tech innovation, 
while Putin leverages Russia's energy reserves. Former U.S. President Donald Trump is advocating for all Bitcoin mining activities to be conducted within the United States, seeing it as a way to create jobs and boost technological innovation in the country. Russian President Vladimir Putin recently approved Bitcoin mining in Russia, capitalizing on the nation's vast energy reserves, particularly in Siberia, where electricity is cheap and the climate is ideal for mining operations. The competition between the U.S. and Russia to dominate Bitcoin mining could shape the future of the cryptocurrency industry, with each country leveraging its unique strengths to attract miners. Trump's vision faces challenges, including concerns over the high energy consumption associated with Bitcoin mining, which could strain U.S. energy resources and raise environmental issues. With lower energy costs and favorable mining conditions, Russia's recent legal support for Bitcoin mining could attract both domestic and international miners, challenging Trump's goal of U.S. dominance in the field. If you've been with us so far, a big thank you. Don't forget to subscribe for free to Bitcoin Zella for your daily news. The link is waiting below. That's all for today's crypto news. Stick around for more updates, insights, and analysis on cryptocurrencies. Share your thoughts in the comments, like this video, and subscribe for more exciting content.